All right, greetings from the Raven Inn in uh, Baltimore, Maryland. All right, the famous, uh, we did some podcasts from here. Uh, so we're enjoying some uh, beer. Right. He's got the uh, Coors Light, not Bud Light. Thank you. Right, I got some Yangling. Uh, I figured it would be a joint review. I was going to review this book, but James wanted to read it. And it's in perfect size. Thank you. Okay. Why does that name sound really familiar? Uh, Varg Vikernes? Yeah. Yeah, but it's in Black Battle. Killed it, killed it. Oh, that's the guy. Yes. yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> that's who it is. But it's <laughs> only. I know that sounds really familiar for a reason. Oh. Well, hey, yeah. there, there you go. go. You did the documentary and all that. Oh, you said the documentary? Yeah, yeah. He took the picture of the guy dead using this album. Well, that was the guy he killed. The guy he killed the that he killed him and went to prison. But the guy that took the picture, their, the, their life sentence is like 25 years, so he's out already. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. If it was America, he'd be done. Yeah. I remember that. Yeah, <laughs> which is exactly. <laughs> speaking of which, right? Even in the intro to this, his prison years even says. Personally, I am of course glad I did not have to suffer a U.S. prison or something like that. <laughs> but that is kind of irrelevant here, obviously. So even he knows that thank God he did that in uh, Oslo and not in uh, you know, Baltimore or Philly or something like that. But um, James was interested in reading the, this book, particularly when the print size was eye-friendly. But also he was probably more interested in this part of what Varg went through. Uh, it's probably the least known thing about what he went through. Anyway. James, um, what was your impression? That was an enjoyable read. It's really something you can read in an hour. It's about a, a novelette length. You know, novelette's like a short, short novel. Uh, I guess it's probably about 14,000 words, maybe. Um, the, the author doesn't make any pretensions that, you know, he's a... Uh, He's a professional writer. He's, he writes the way he talks, which I found really endearing because I saw a lot of his videos. And he, this is just writing just the way you talk. And I thought that was really cool. And um, the, uh, to me, this was a study of how a largely, homo, a largely homogeneous society will alienate somebody. And use outsiders to do it. For instance, this man was locked up for killing a fellow Norwegian. All of his caretakers, prison guards, lawyers, judges, psychologists, they were all Norwegian. He was repeatedly punished by being put into sections of prisons that were dominated by North Africans. And that was, uh, that was by design, and there were moments of human kindness where some of his cards would uh, show solidarity towards him but these were for the most part lower level people uh, most of the people in the middle were uh, that were men were kind of horrible I think there was a uh, it, it's just a perfect showing of how ideology can split a society you know, once you get away from tradition wow. Like I said, the, how I was struck by the, the second book he did, and then of course this one just reinforced it, was of course uh, the dream of many for uh, America is the homogeneous society. But even in homogeneous Norway, all the same problems that you and I grew up with knowing and experiencing, it was the same. They didn't have the excuse of, well, we're like, we have this... Uh, this underclass, you know, pushing the boundaries of more laws and, you know, social cohesion. They had the same problems there with this. If you, if this was the only book from our time, in, from this time period in Norway that survived some apocalypse and authors found it a thousand years from now, if this was your only source, you would assume that this was a homogeneous society and that they imported people from 
incompatible ethnic groups and nations in order to punish the, uh, the natives that did not behave according to the rules. I mean, that, that would just be the snapshot you would get if, if this was the only source that you had. So th that shows that these people who we largely pitied because they were not psychologically suited to isolation prison systems uh, suffered a great deal. Some of them, I think, even burned themselves to death. Yeah, like I smelled like bacon. Yeah, yeah. This, uh, it, it, it seems as if these... North Africans were just imported in order to punish Norwegian criminals yeah, well, by being forced to be housed with these guys that would be driven insane uh, by the experience and the best line in here was by this huge Norwegian weightlifter who stuck up for Varg when the group of North Africans were picking on him apparently you know by suggestions from the prison system. Right, yeah. uh, and the great Norwegian guys said to the instigator, if you are a gang, we are a gang. And it all stopped. <laughs> so, that was uh, pretty interesting. That shows you that the violence committed by the aliens, it's being committed on behalf of the system. Pretty much like the Scythian archers being the police in Athens. Right. You know, used by the upper class Athenian oligarchs to control the demons. Or, or like, or like this place, uh, this city that we're in. But uh, yeah, you know, uh, Nero, our buddy Nero, made a good point. When he read it. He was like, I was actually surprised how sympathetic Varg was towards a number of these North Africans in terms of more than what you would think of what he normally says. He did seem kind of bad for, like you said. Uh, the guy that burned himself up. This is a guy growing up in a way different culture. Obviously, Norwegians are more used to isolation, the Nordic type, right? Uh, but this guy was put in the same conditions as them, and it drove him insane. He's used to growing up, having people around him all the time, activity, loud bazaars or loud street fairs, and now he's essentially locked in a room, or even in a place where it's just it's quiet all the time. And, you know. I was impressed with the stoicism of the author. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, yeah. It was epic tennis levels of stoicism that he practiced. Sometimes his youth got the better of him, and he would joke the system people. Uh, but he soon adapted uh, to the isolation and, and actually enjoyed it and asked for it. Yes, well, yeah, like, when, basically he did for two years. He goes, all I did was uh, read and read and read and do push-ups and read. He got a lot of reading done yeah. uh, during this period. And I equate his prison experience as a young man with my life as a young man in Baltimore in which I was constantly hunted and attacked by people that were imported to terrorize my group of people and successfully drove my entire family out of our hometown. And I read thousands of books because I only braved the streets in order to make a passage between my home to work and from work to my home. And just doing that brought many adventures that I didn't want to have, and I read thousands of books. So I would equate Borg's situation uh, in a Norwegian prison system with being a person of his general ethnicity growing up in uh, you know, building an adult life in 1980s, 1990s, Baltimore. Yeah, well, it's amazing the similar strains. Like you said, I was surprised how much it was the same. Oh, and you experience the same thing in your life in New oh, York, geez, where you have on. all these people that are constantly hunting you, they don't look like you, and the people that come to protect them, and the people that search you and make sure you can't protect yourself, they all look like you. Only they're yes. wearing a uniform and they're big. Yeah, uh, yeah exactly. Right? Exactly. Uh, and it was interesting too that you know obviously the system, the main system was abhorrent, but there were sympathizers within the system. Yeah, yeah, yeah was which great. was kind of cool that he even mentioned. He mentions the famous one with the skin hut, where the uh, the one the, the I mean he was shuffled back and forth between these prisons. 
uh, and there would be such a delay that he'd actually change his mind and not want to go to the prison, get used to where he was, and now, oh no, you made this request a year ago, now you're going to go. He's like, well, I don't want to go now. Well, no, now you're going to go. Uh, another parallel that I see with Vard's account of his prison time was a book that was written a couple hundred years ago by Ethan Allen, the journal of his captivity by the British, oh. where he was passed around from prison to ship to prison to ship to prison and came under the control of numerous enemy officers. He was a revolutionary. Yeah, he's and he was in the same race, and the officers even attempted to recruit him to their side and give him a promotion. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Varg's experience with the, uh, the, the various uh, situations he was in, it seems like he took a tour of just about every prison yeah, Norway. and jail yeah. in Norway, very similar to Ethan Allen's captivity journal. Interesting. I didn't, I wasn't even aware of all that. So you do. That's interesting. Yeah. They, they sum it up pretty much. Like I said, it's an enjoyable read. It was an enjoyable read. And like I said, Varg uh, had moments of sympathy for you know even these invaders because invaders they're being brought in. They're not, they couldn't make their way with their own by their own means if they tried. And, and thank you, sir, for this typing and spacing. Please continue to print your books oh, like yeah. this. You hear so that, Varg? I can read them. <laughs> right. Right, yeah, right. exactly. <laughs> yeah, thank God for that. Right. Uh, yeah, and it mentions how, and it, the other thing too, like all the people are very low IQ and they're all on drugs, and a lot of them were acting the way they did because they were not getting their drugs. They don't have the America boat anymore. They uh, brought us here. Oh, we you both remember? came on the America oh, boat. We're, you, we're you, under five feet, nine inches tall. You remember you know? the, oh, the America so, boat yeah, video the America boat. that he made. Yeah. Oh, so, from an American boat, uh, you know, legacy survivor. Uh, thanks for the book. Yeah, so like I said, this is a great book. I can't wait to get the next one. Obviously, it's going to have more interest for me since he discusses the actual mechanics of recording the music. Including the two albums he did in prison, you know? uh, and then when he got out, that whole you know, that, an interesting period. So, all right, man, good. We got Lafon, we got Varg, we're doing good, and man. Sponsored by Macro, Macro Shift. Shot. Right. Public sector, you are safe. Right. Okay. Because my man's no, there's no micro here. It's Macro and Shot. Well, we, we're wearing the empathetic colors of Macro Shot. That's as right. Well. Okay. That's right. You didn't know that. <laughs> he reviews books. Yeah, so he reviews books for his YouTube channel. Yeah. I just had your song going through it. Yeah, yeah. No. This is all right. All right. And here, just a real quick, I can win in relation to that. The only way I right here we go. So I have faced massive injustice from the legal system and also from the prison system. But the only way I can win in relation to that is to do well in life, to be successful and to look forward. You gotta remember that. They did everything they could legally and even illegally to break me, to destroy me and my name under the sky and they failed. Yeah, man. Fucking Varg, dude. Can't wait for the new uh, metal recordings he says what he did. So, anyway, signing off from uh, Raven It.